Hi, this is James from OA Systems, and today in this video we're going to take a look at forecasting in Dynamics 365. The interesting thing about forecasting is there's actually two types. So if you have the Dynamics Sales Enterprise, Premium, or Microsoft Relationship Sales licenses, you get access to forecasting. But if you scroll down and have a look at the Sales Premium, which includes the Sales Insights in the license, that is the one that includes the predictive forecasting. So we're not going to drill into the predictive forecasting today because for most users, uh, they won't be looking at that premium license, uh, but it will show up in the demo. Uh, but be aware that um, if you have a sales professional license, forecasting won't be available to you. Everybody else who has a sales license does get access to it. So I'm in my environment here and you can see in the standard template layout, uh, it's in the performance area under goals. Uh, what I've done is I've set up a series of forecasts. And uh, you can see here, when you look at the forecasts, what this is designed to do is basically give you a breakdown of, uh, for myself in Q3 in this demo environment, uh, I've set myself a quota. The prediction is only available if you've got that extra add-on license. Uh, and what it's going to do is show to me based on um, where I am across my one open and lost criteria, uh, how I'm tracking against target. And what you can also do is if you want to choose a drill down, in this case, I'm drilling down by account. Uh, what that's going to do is it's just going to load the various accounts I'm working with and show me actually which account is each of these uh, roll-ups coming from. So you can see there is a breakdown of the opportunities here. This is just drilling it down by account. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to jump into um, the back end and show you how we set up one of these. Uh, one more point, you'll just see here, this is telling us for this quarter how much time is left. So with the sales app, you have these app settings. Uh, and because in this environment, I have actually instigated the sales insight, there are sales insight settings available in there as well. But what we're doing is we're coming once again into this performance management area and going into forecast configuration. And you'll see there are the ones that I've already set up so far. Now, actually, what I'm going to do is recreate this demo one. So. There are a couple of options, and this will come down to engaging uh, with a consultant to talk about uh, how you're capturing data, what format your data's in, and if it's the right fit to be able to see in these formats. But what I'm going to do is just click on the most basic, which is using the organizational chart forecast, uh, do the demo. And what we're going to do is we're going to roll up by the opportunity entity and then look at it by user. So as we were seeing, uh, that uh, view before was against me as a contact. Uh, I'm going to choose that same contact and that's going to give us a preview um, once that's set up. So it's just saying it's this is set up by user and it's my user. Now the interesting thing is here you can choose either a monthly or quarterly breakdown uh, what time period that's across and you'll see uh, that goes far out into the future um, and what quarter that starts in. So if we choose monthly, you'll see the quarters will change to months uh, and you can go to a maximum of 12 months or if you're quarterly, four quarters. Uh, so what I'll do in this case is I might switch it to months uh, and put it at the maximum. Um, and you'll see it says start on, uh, on this date. So when we go next, it's just who can have access to this and security roles. Um, now, here's the really interesting bit. So once again, this will not be available to anyone who doesn't have a Sales Insight license. Uh, and what it does is it, it asks, do we want to have the quota? You can untick that, uh, but I would recommend having that there. And then it asks you, which option, option set do you want to look at? So when we had uh, the view before, I think it was across one lost... Uh, an active or something along those lines. Um, but any of the option sets we have in the system, you can choose from. So you'll see here, you can see, depending on what sales stage it at, it's at, uh, depending on what status, which was the one we were looking at before, um, what the status reason of the current uh, opportunity is. Timeline. We can also go in and build our own custom uh, 
option sets and choose from those and they will be available in here but in this case what I'm going to do is uh, hot cold and warm so we want to know um, not only what's in uh, the forecast for uh, these months but also whether they actually are something we think is likely to land or not right so once you've selected that you do need to add it uh, and then configure um, just a couple of options here so what is the financial number it's pulling from to calculate this because uh, a lot of these won't be one we're going to um, do them as estimated um, so the cold ones the hot ones and the warm ones will do that but if you've got ones that are um, one lost what you might want to do is the ones that are one and lost you might want to do uh, the one ones on the actual revenue you save when you close the opportunity and the lost ones on the estimated revenue so you have a concept of uh, what a sales rep um, has lost as part of uh, their engagement with that client you know whether they're dedicated a relevant amount of time to uh, that opportunity even though they didn't succeed uh, that does come up to your organizational requirements um, then we can add additional filters of how we want to drill down I'm not going to um, add that to this um, and sorry that's that's where we can do that as well daily snapshots uh, I'll show you the difference between activating those and not activating those although I don't have relevant data in my system at the moment now here's the really interesting part once we go into the um, activate area when we activate the forecast you'll see down here it gives us the ability to upload quotes and other statistic data for this forecast so that actually doesn't become available for us to add until we've activated uh, this particular forecast but when it does you'll see this turns into a uh, green downloadable template here so as you see that's now available for download uh, and if we open up that uh, what it does is when we've put it into edit mode gives us the ability to go uh, what is our quota per month and if you want to go in and, and fill it in uh, manually you can do that um, it also gives you the ability to uh, drag that across if you've got a consistent value uh, obviously you need to save that okay so we've finished that uh, and we just need a moment for that to um, activate and you'll see it has there so what we're going to do is now go back out to that sales area into our forecasts and have a look at a couple of the couple of the options we could have selected there uh, so once again this was the original one that we went on that was only across one quarter and across the lost open at one um, and you can see in here uh, if we go into the forecast what I've done is I've set that one up as an annual across the four quarters uh, of the year um, I've also set that on predictive so there is a couple of things in here which is setting a trend um, and seeing the flow of data um, as it goes through um, and as you change the date range um, you'll be able to do so yeah, you'll see it's uh, refreshing the calculations across uh, the opportunities that are in that quarter and when there's no data available that's what you get uh, if I come into this one I've set it up as a monthly forecast uh, and I've set it up on the um, stages so the process flow so as you go through the qualify propose uh, qualify develop propose and close um, you'll see we've got different values across there depending on what these opportunities are in and as we go across months uh, the same thing each of those will be in the various states that they're set up in um, and we can drill down actually we'll just jump back to here uh, we can drill down um, into <coughs> the various uh, accounts that that's spread through so what we'll do is we'll just go into the forecast that I've just set up under demo uh, and you'll see here once again what we've got is a quota that's been set up um, the status across hot cold and warm 
um, I don't have products in these opportunities. That's why that's not showing up. Um, and I can go through the various months uh, as I could with my earlier opportunity. So the ability to choose those different option sets does give you a real flexibility around different cuts to the data that you might want to look at. Um, the ability to be able to group them, uh, these reports, instead of by user, by things like region um, or other opportunities, uh, also give you an ability to create different useful organizational reports. There is goals in the system. I find from my perspective this more useful to me uh, as an end user um, for quickly cutting uh, the financial information. Uh, and you'll see there is some capacity to have another view like the Kanban view. So that's how to configure forecasts in your environment. Uh, realistically, there are quite a lot of scenarios you can trigger in there. Uh, and I have specifically focused on the financial view. Um, if you want to have a conversation, connect with us at OA Systems and we can go into more detail for you. Uh, keep eye out for more videos.